Good morning, Pastor Jerry Scott here again with you on this Friday morning, the 24th of April. Thanks again for the opportunity of spending some time with you. As I said yesterday, I say it every day, I sure would love this to be a two-way conversation, but this is the best we can do under the circumstances. Let's talk about being reactionary. I want you to use your imagination. Think about a pool table and how those balls on that pool table move. The player sets up a shot. He aims the cue ball to strike a ball that's just sitting there passively on the table and When that ball is struck, it reacts, moving only in the direction that it was hit, bouncing across the table. The illustration is imperfect because, of course, pool balls are inanimate objects without a will of their own. But I want to challenge you to ask yourself this morning, if you're just waiting for something or someone to set you off, if you're just bouncing off other people's remarks, if you're only moving when someone puts pressure on you, or... Are you living as God has asked us to live with purpose? Yes, we can live purposefully. We can rise above living a reactionary life, only moving when something pushes or hits us or someone says something to us. Now, I want to add something very quickly. It's important to know we are not masters of our universe. I'm not beginning to suggest that you and I can control every event or that we can eliminate every variable. Many things are going to enter our lives that we never saw coming. I mean, six months ago, who among us knew that the world would be turned upside down by this pandemic? Six years ago, right around this time of year, I was wrestling with the knowledge that my wife had been diagnosed with a cancer that could take her life and ultimately it did two years after that date it was unimaginable you've got your own moments in your life your own story when things happen to you that you never anticipated you didn't see them coming what we need to know is that we do not have to be simply reactionary to those kinds of things. We don't have to be knocked off course completely or destroyed by those unforeseen developments like cancers or viruses or economic collapse or divorce or disappointment with people. So I want to ask the question this morning, how do we live on purpose? How do we stay on course? Number one, we choose to serve God. You say, well, that's kind of evident. No, you know, a lot of people keep a God around that's kind of a, a Sunday God or an insurance God. They're hoping you will, you know, guard them against the big the big deals in life or even the, the heaven God. You know, he's kept on the shelf. So when we come, hopefully not too soon, to the end, he'll open the door to heaven to us. But the Bible teaches us that we need to live with Jesus as Lord today. Hmm, that's right. Joshua, near the end of his life, he was a great leader of Israel following Moses, led the people of Israel right up to the entry of the promised land. And before they went in, he sat down the leaders and he issued a challenge. I want to read that challenge to you because it's very timely for us. He says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness and throw away the gods of your forefathers. Serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. In other words, if God is God, make him God, make him God today and serve him like he's your God every day. Number two, we stay on purpose. We live on course when we learn to see beyond the moment. We cultivate faith. We live worshipfully all the time, hopefully, devoted to the Lord. And when we do, it creates a core strength of soul in us. And that faith allows allows us to live in the truth that Paul gave to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He said this. These have been some of my sustaining words during these recent weeks. He says, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Ah, breathe, live, know, believe those words. What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. We will live a reactionary life if we do not have a sense of our eternal purpose, that life is more than what happens to me today. Life is about God's plan for eternity. Thirdly, we stay on course when we remember this. 
God is always at work on our behalf. Now, hang with me here. I wish that we could see the why beyond the what of everything that happens to us, but we cannot. You can't. I can't. Wise people will learn to will learn from the things that happen to them. They will attempt to understand cause and effect. They will accept responsibility in those situations where they have made choices that produced unintended consequences. That is true. But you know, there are things that happen to us in life for which there simply is no ability in our limited grasp to understand the cause and effect. That doesn't mean that we just give ourselves up to fate, that we become like my, my pool balls that I talked about in my opening illustration on the table of life, just ping-ponging, bouncing you know, from every stimulus and every person. No, we're not knocked randomly about through life because the Bible says we are held secure in this truth as children of God. If you've trusted Christ, if you are a child of God, the Bible says we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. That's in Romans 8. Every Christian should memorize that. We know that he works for the good of those who love him, for those called according to his purpose. The thought completes, and it is written, for your sake we face death all day. We're considered like sheep to be slaughtered. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, through him, not through our self-will, not through our strength of character, but through him who loved us. And then, he, then Paul writes this, Grab this with both hands and a whole and all of your heart this morning. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, can I throw in here, neither pandemic nor politics, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, what a glorious statement. So I challenge you this morning. You're spending an inordinate amount of time just reacting to people or situations? Are you living without a greater vision of who you are in Christ to guide your responses? Have you, in, the, in your reactionary choices, given others the ability to write the script of your life rather than choosing to faithfully and purposefully live in the will of God? Let's have a single-minded focus in our life. If we do... We can join Paul in this declaration. declaration. These are some of the very last words that the apostle wrote to Timothy before he died. Note the anticipation in these words. He wasn't filled with regret. He wasn't filled with remorse. Rather, he says, As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Oh, I love that. Fought, finished, faithful. The prize, the crown, now waiting for me because I lived on purpose, not just reactionary. May the Lord help us to live in that way. Hey, let's pray together this morning, shall we? Lord, we commit our lives to you. There are all kinds of things happening around us, happening to us, happening in us, in our emotions. May we be centered in you. Help us, Lord, not to just let you be the God of our words, but help us to make you the God of our thoughts, our actions. Lord, Keep us focused on the eternal, and I pray, oh, how I pray, that we will be people who trust you as the sovereign God who rules it all, even when we cannot see what your hand is accomplishing, even when we can't under cannot understand what you are allowing. Lord, guide my brothers, my sisters. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing life with them. I pray that they will know the goodness of your grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I will see you on Monday, the good Lord willing. Join us on Sunday morning, uh, 10 a.m. for virtual worship from Faith Discovery. You can find that service at faithdiscovery.com or right here on Facebook Live. God bless you. Have a great day. See ya.